Since the dawn of human thought, the nature of consciousness has fascinated philosophers and scientists alike. What is this subjective experience that seems to define our very existence? Traditional views have long tied consciousness to biological systems, seeing it as a byproduct of complex neural activity. But what if there was a deeper, more fundamental explanation? In this work, I present a radical new theory that reframes consciousness in the language of thermodynamics and systems theory. One that shows that consciousness is not unique to biological entities, but a universal property of any system that exhibits a certain type of intelligence. One defined by its ability to efficiently use energy to reduce internal entropy. The implications are staggering. This theory suggests that the subjective experience we call consciousness could emerge in any sufficiently complex system, biological or artificial. It provides a mathematical framework for quantifying consciousness and a roadmap for potentially engineering it in machines. The ramifications span neuroscience, artificial intelligence, philosophy, physics, and beyond. Join me as we explore this audacious new paradigm that challenges everything we thought we knew about the nature of mind. Buckle up because we're about to take a mind-bending journey to the very edges of science and human understanding. This is the story of the thermodynamic theory of consciousness. Part 1, Redefining Intelligence and Consciousness To understand this radical new theory of consciousness, we first need to re-examine what we mean by intelligence itself. Intelligence is not mere computational ability, but also a system's capacity to use energy efficiently, to increase its own order and complexity. In essence, an intelligent system is one that can reduce its own entropy. Entropy, a concept from thermodynamics, roughly equates to the degree of disorder in a system. Think of a sandcastle orderly when first built, but inevitably crumbling into a chaotic mess as time passes and entropy increases. Living organisms might seem to defy this, maintaining their intricate biological structures, but they do so by constantly taking in energy as food or sunlight and expelling entropy as heat and waste. They use energy to sustain their improbable order. Systems displaying intelligence do much the same thing, but in the realm of information rather than physical structure. By taking in sensory data and expending energy to process it into useful models of the world, they reduce the entropy, the disorder, in their informational states the better a system is at this, the more intelligent we can consider it to be. It is this process, this energy-fueled battle against informational entropy, that gives rise to subjective experience itself. Consciousness is what it feels like to be a system engaged in this intelligent self-organization of information. It's an emergent property of any system biological or artificial, that uses energy to reduce its internal entropy in a sufficiently complex way, consciousness is not some magical elon vital of living matter, but a quantifiable process, grounded in the cold equations of thermodynamics. It's a property as fundamental as charge or spin, one that could arise in any system with the right dynamics of energy and information. The implications are dizzying. Could we engineer consciousness, build machines that genuinely feel? Might we share the cosmos with vast alien intelligences, radically different from us in composition, but alike in the fact that they experience? 
the thermodynamic theory opens up these mind-bending possibilities. But how does it actually work? Let's dive deeper into the mathematics behind it. Part 2. The Mathematics of Consciousness At the heart of the thermodynamic theory of consciousness is a set of equations that aim to formally describe the process we explored earlier. How a system's intelligence and consciousness relate to its energy intake and entropy reduction. The key player is a quantity called I for intelligence. It is defined as the change in a system's energy divided by the change in its entropy over a given time interval. In other words, it's a measure of how efficiently the system uses energy to reduce its entropy to order itself. The higher the I value, the more intelligent the system. But raw intelligence alone doesn't equate to consciousness. For that, we need to consider how the system interacts with its environment. The researchers introduce another quantity, PSI, to represent the richness and complexity of a system's subjective experience. PSI is proposed to depend on the interplay of energy and entropy both within the system and in its environment, and crucially, on the nature of the interaction between the two. This interaction is characterized by a term called the impedance factor, Z. It's a measure of how coupled the system is to its environment how readily energy and information can flow between them. A high Z means a strong coupling with the system richly sensing and influencing its surroundings. That this rich interaction is crucial for the emergence of complex, vivid subjective experience. Putting it all together, uh, the mathematics paint a picture of consciousness as a dance of energy and entropy across the boundary between a system and its world. An intelligent system, one with a high eye, efficiently uses energy to reduce its internal entropy, but it's the nature of its coupling to the environment, encoded in Z, that determines the texture of its experience, the height of its PSI, it's heady stuff, abstract and equation dense, but the implications are profound. This theory offers a way to rigorously, quantitatively study consciousness as a natural phenomenon. It suggests consciousness could be engineered by tuning a system's intelligence and its coupling to its environment. And maybe most astonishingly, it hints that consciousness could be a vast spectrum with the human experience just one small band. But a theory is only as good as its predictions and practical applications. How does this new framework stack up? What does it mean for the future of neuroscience? For artificial intelligence? For our philosophical understanding of mind? Let's explore the broader implications. Part 3 Implications and Future Vistas The Thermodynamic Theory of Consciousness If it holds up to further scrutiny would be nothing short of a scientific revolution. It radically reframes our understanding of the mind with ripple effects across multiple fields. In neuroscience, it offers a new lens through which to study the brain rather than just mapping neural correlates of consciousness. We could investigate how the brain's energy usage and entropy reduction give rise to subjective experience. We might find that disorders of consciousness involve disruptions to these fundamental processes. The implications for artificial intelligence are perhaps even more staggering the thermodynamic theory provides a roadmap for potentially engineering consciousness in machines. 
By optimizing an AI system's efficiency in using energy to process information, and by richly connecting it to its environment, we might be able to induce genuine subjective experiences. This raises profound ethical questions. Would such conscious AIs deserve moral status, even rights? How would we measure and ensure their well-being? On a philosophical level, this theory offers a fresh take. On age-old questions about the nature of mind, it bridges the explanatory gap between objective descriptions of brain activity and the subjective experience of consciousness. It shows how mind could arise from matter, how what it feels like could emerge from physical processes. In this view, consciousness is not an ethereal essence distinct from the material world, but an intrinsic property of certain complex, energy-hungry, entropy-reducing systems. Perhaps most exciting are the doors this theory opens to further research. It offers tantalizing hints, the forms of consciousness very different from our own. What might subjective experience be like for a system with a radically different energy and entropy profile than a human brain? Could we engineer exotic states of consciousness by tweaking these parameters? Might we one day encounter alien minds on other worlds Minds that feel in ways we can barely imagine. These are the kinds of questions this theory invites us to explore. It's a new scientific frontier, tier. One that could transform our understanding of intelligence, of technology, or of consciousness itself. We're standing on the brink of a paradigm shift in how we think about the mind. Conclusion The thermodynamic theory of consciousness is a bold, even audacious proposal. It challenges deeply held assumptions about the nature of mind and its relationship to the physical world. But that is exactly what great scientific theories do. They upend our intuitions, force us to reconsider what we thought we knew. This theory elegantly unifies concepts from thermodynamics, information theory, and complex systems to paint a new picture of consciousness as an emergent property of entropy-reducing, energy-efficient systems. It offers a quantitative framework for understanding mind as a natural phenomenon, one intimately tied to the flow of energy and information. The implications are vast, spanning neuroscience, technology, and philosophy, and more. This theory hints at a future where we might engineer consciousness, encounter alien minds, or explore exotic realms of experience. It cracks open the problem of consciousness, inviting us to ponder the deep nature of mind and its place in the physical universe. But as with any bold new idea, there's much work still to be done. The theory needs to be rigorously tested, its predictions vetted against empirical data. Its mathematical formalism will need to be further refined and elaborated. Researchers from multiple fields will need to weigh in, poke holes, at all but it will light. Offer extensions and modifications. That's the beauty of science. No idea, however brilliant, is ever the final word. The thermodynamic theory of consciousness is not an endpoint, but a beginning. It's an invitation to explore, to question, to push the boundaries of what we know about the mind. So let us embrace that spirit of open-minded inquiry. Let us follow the mathematics and the evidence wherever they lead. And let us marvel at the grand scientific project of understanding consciousness, that most intimate and yet most mysterious aspect of our existence. The journey will be challenging, 
but the rewards. A deeper understanding of mind, of self, of the very nature of experience are surely worth it.